Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here. And today we have what is, I think, a first from Wargaming in terms of what they're doing with the new ship. It's kind of taking the whole copy paste thing to a new level, and I'm not 100% sure how I feel about it just yet. Among this dev blog is also some more information about the upcoming support CVs and a couple of new premium ships as well. So if you want to read along as I read aloud, you can follow the link in the description down below. That will bring you right to the dev blog website. I will be throwing up any relevant images or artwork as we go through it. And again, if you want to check it out for yourself, check out the link down below. If you do find yourself enjoying this video, think it's entertaining or informational, please make sure to drop a like and leave a comment. It helps on the YouTube side of things. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. They say new ships close testing 12.9. In update 12.9, we are going to introduce the following ships. Italian cruiser Francesco Ferricio, German battleship Scharnhorst 43, European destroyer Stored 43, and American carriers Yorktown and Essex, the splits. So they start off with the new split lines. Well, the, not the splits, the support CVs, I should say. Okay, I guess technically it is a split because it's a separate line. Uh, whatever, the support CVs. American aircraft carrier Essex has returned to the game for testing, accompanied by Yorktown. These ships will be added to the tech tree in the future. Independence, a tier 6 aircraft carrier, were also in her testing in one of the upcoming updates. Details about her will be available later. Now, of course, these ships were previously in the game as the even tier CVs. Sorry, as the odd tier CVs. They're now being reintroduced back in as even tier support CVs. So they've all been bumped up a tier essentially they say new carriers have lesser attacking potential but can provide more utility with their new tools both yorktown and essex have access to one standard squadron torpedo bombers and two tactical squadrons attack aircraft and dive bombers with jet assisted takeoff their torpedo bombers need less time to reach the optimal spread when dropping torpedoes compared to other carriers and especially other american carriers while a single torpedo has relatively low damage, it is compensated by the high number of torpedoes and the above average speed. Their attack aircraft use HE rockets with high penetration and fire chance, but the number of rockets per payload is relatively low. As for the dive bombers, they have a relatively low penetration and fire chance, but there are numerous bombs per payload. Both tactical squadrons can provide cover for their allies using the smoke curtain generator consumable that was recently introduced in concealed maneuvers. Additionally, these, these ships can call for patrol fighters that arrive much faster compared to most carriers. However, its spotting range is relatively low, similar to Beern's fighter. As a result, these fighters take more of a defensive, interceptive role. You know what's missing from this? Mines. The American ships in testing had the sea mines that submarines and surface ships could hit. But now, they're gone. Very, very interesting indeed. All it mentions is that they have the smoke generator, which is obviously a more tactical tool, if you will, than the mines, but very, very interesting there. I thought the mines worked relatively well once they got uh, the nerf bat out and bonked them down a bit. thought they were a useful tool when ca uh, countering submarines. Of course, this is all still in testing. So this could change, but very interesting. They're now going to one actual squadron and two tactical squadrons. So you have torpedoes that you can fall back on, but your rocket planes and dive bombers, no matter what, will have a two-minute cooldown time. That's an interesting way to kind of balance out the mines, because, again, that's just you being able to do more damage. So interesting indeed. I'll be very eager to hear any more about these ships. Of course, seeing the, um, the Essex back in game is great, along with the Yorktown. So, well, like, the Yorktown was a Lexington, right? So, it's nice seeing another one in game, another historical ship. Alright, so on to the new ships. So, the Italian cruiser Francesco Ferricio, the Tier 7. Francesco Ferricio is based on, or Fricchio, I don't know, I don't, Italian pasta, you know, is based on a 1939 design that envisioned a long-range light cruiser for future Italian operations in the Indian Ocean. One of the features of the 8,000-ton ship was to place all the main, main caliber artillery 
eight 152 millimeter guns and two four gun turrets. Aiming cruises after Italian generals and naval leaders became a tradition at the Regi Marina in the late 19th century, and in the 1930s it became an unwritten rule for ships of the light cruiser class. Following this rule, the ship, which could have been laid down at the turn of the 1930s and early 1940s, was named in honor of Fran uh, Francesco Ferricio, a 16th century military commander famous in the fight for the independence of the Florentine Republic. The ship is armed with eight 152mm main battery guns with great firing range and quick to reverse speed, but limited firing angles. The aft and main battery turret can rotate 360 degrees. She has access to HE and SAP shells with flat ballistics that allow her to shoot over long distances. However, her damage per minute is not the highest. Additionally, she is equipped with two quadruple tube torpedo launchers. Torpedoes have good range, but their speed and damage are relatively low. The ship has poor armor and a low HP pool, but a high speed and good maneuverability, as well as excellent concealment. She has access to an exhaust smoke generator and can choose between fighter or spotter. So, yeah, I don't know. This one doesn't look that great, especially with the two turrets being at the opposite end of the ship. If they were both in the front, you could probably make it work. And I'm sure there will be, of course, those that can get this ship to work, especially with long range. Let's see what exactly what long range is with their guns. Oh yeah, that is actually long range. 17.5 kilometers for a tier 7 light cruiser? Okay, okay, that might actually work. What's the velocity? 995 meters a second for both her HE and her SAP shells. And a reload time of 9.5 seconds. You know what? I think probably in a tier 7 game, this will probably work. But getting up to, to tier 9, I don't think so. It's just going to get dumped on by things with big guns because you have to show broadside to get both of your turrets on target so yeah i wouldn't bet this one's gonna do too great in my opinion at least how much your hp twenty eight thousand and 16 millimeters of plating yeah that's um i have my doubts about that one but moving on german battleship scharnhorst 43 which is still at tier 7 so let's get into this. The lead ship in a series of two battleships designed for raiding operations entered service a few months before the outbreak of World War II. Scharnhorst made her first combat voyage in November of 1939, followed by a landing in Norway, a raid into the Atlantic Ocean, and a breakthrough across the English Channel, Rip Nisenau. In 1943, the battleship was transferred to Norway to counter Arctic convoys. On December 26, 1943, Scharnhorst was sunk in a battle with the Allied squadron off North Cape. We did a cinematic on that, you should check that out. Compared to Scharnhorst, Scharnhorst 43 has a shorter firing range, Lower accuracy and slower reload speed. Instead, her secondary guns have a high rate of fire and her torpedoes have a faster reload time. She can also use Repair Party that restores more HP per second and has a shorter cooldown. Unlike Scharnhorst, she doesn't have access to spotting aircraft. Okay, so what they've done here is they've copy-pasted a ship. They've put it at a later date than the original ship. But there's no refit. She didn't undergo any refits. At least nothing major between the version we have in game and then this version. All they've done is mess with her stats. So, uh, eh. What happens most of the time they do these, you know, later or earlier refits? They move them up or down a tier, because that's of course appropriate depending upon the refit. Like West Virginia. You know, obviously the the, the post Pearl Harbor refit had to go up a tier, and the um, older version of the ship had to go down a tier. You know, obviously. But they haven't done that here. It's just a more secondary focused Sharnhorst. Now, let's see what they've done. So, the main battery reload is now up to da, 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 23 seconds. And the Sigma's at 1.8, dispersion's 249 meters now. And her secondary guns, so 4x2's doesn't give me the reload. Does it give me the reload? Uh, you see, Wargaming, what you typically have to do is include the reload stats 
so we can talk about it. Um, okay, that's cool. So the secondaries reload faster, but they're not telling us how much faster they're reloading. Unless I am blind, they're not here. Okay, so they would have to greatly decrease the reload in order to, in my opinion, make it worth it. What's the main battery firing? 18.9 kilometers now. I mean, at tier 7 with the Sharn Horse, even the Sharns we have in game right now, you're not exactly dunking shots at that range anyway. So that's not a huge deal, in my opinion. My question is, couldn't this just been like a module you could have equipped? Like a, let's say they maybe want to start working on unique upgrades for ships that aren't just tier 10, you know, all the way down to tier 7 maybe. I think this would have been the better choice. I mean... Obviously, we're talking about a company that wants to make money, so obviously hitting copy-paste and tweaking the ship's stats, that's an incredibly easy way for them to make money, because all they have to do, they don't, they don't have to remodel anything, because again, it's not a refit, it's the exact same ship, it's just tweaked more towards secondaries. So, again, couldn't we just have a module here? Or, maybe, you know, just the way you build the ship. You know, back for the Commander rework, you can do that! And it was great. Um, now, you can put a second build on Sean Horse right now. Doesn't really work the, that well. That's my other point here, too. Because she has the 105s and not the 128s. The Niza now, the Tier 7 Tech Line German Battleship, which was the actual plan refit that the Sean Horse and Niza now were supposed to take, has 128 secondaries, which means she can pin 32, which means she's great in Tier 7 and Tier 9 games because her secondaries can pin 32 millimeters of armor. The 105s can't do that. They can't get over that 32 millimeter threshold. They're stuck at, what, 26, 27 millimeters? So, yeah. I don't know how I feel about this. I'm not a huge fan at the moment. I mean, more brawling, yes, but also doesn't really happen a lot anyways and Sean Horse even with the faster reload in the secondaries unless it's a lot faster isn't really going to be able to do that much better than like a nice now with 128s that can pin 32 millimeters base so yeah mixed bag on that one in my opinion all right going down to the stored 43 they say eight type s destroyers ordered by the british admiralty under the war emergency program in her service in 1943 to 1944 Two ships of the series were transferred to the Royal Norwegian Navy and were named Stord and Svenir. During the Battle of the North Cape, Stord was involved in the sinking German battleship Scharnhorst. In June 44, Stord participated in the Normandy landings, after which she was in active service for another 15 years. Stord 43 is an artillery destroyer, and while she is armed with only four guns and single turrets, they have a good damage per minute and accuracy. Unlike Stord, she has access to AP shells, and her torpedoes have shorter range but higher speed and deal more damage. The ship has a low HP pool, pretty bad concealment, and mediocre speed. She has access to smoke generator but lacks engine boost. Instead, she has one charge of specialized repair party that restores a considerable portion of HP in a short period of time. That sounds like fun. They are doing a North Cape event. That's what's going on here. A hundred percent what's going on here. They're doing a North Cape event. Because you got Sharn Horse and you got Stored. A hundred percent we have a North Cape event coming up, which again, cool. Like, you know, that's cool. Oh, uh, I bet. December 26, yep, 12.9, it's lining up, North Cape event around that time. Okay, so like for that, I get it, but again, could we not just get a module for Shorn Horse that would make her a better brawler in this case? Because in the Battle of the North Cape, her, her main battery guns, the two in the front, the two turrets in the front, got, nor got knocked out. So her sectors are doing a lot of the heavy lifting, so I see what they're going here for that. So, yeah. I don't know how I feel about it. Right now, I, I'm not the biggest fan of this idea, especially when it's a copy-paste ship like this, and it's literally not visually different from <laughs> the ship that we already have in-game. So, yeah. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments down below. Share your thoughts down there. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to drop a like and leave a comment on the channel, on, on the video. Helps out the channel quite a bit. Hope you guys did enjoy it. Have a wonderful Friday. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.